and welcome back. Today we are flying out the Focke-Wolf 190A1 at 3.0 and it's absolutely criminal. For you today I have a few dogfights, two 7 kill games with an assist, a 6 kill and an ace. And then I want to emphasize on flap usage today. I made a video on the Focke Wolf 190A1, I think it's a year ago. It's still one of my better videos in terms of explaining to you how to use energy to turn with people. Still very much relevant. But today I want to spice it up a little bit and we are going to do basically the same thing today. Except I want to put more emphasis on the flaps of this thing. This will go for most vehicles. Keep in mind some planes have a little bit different properties. Like the k 84s they actually do turn better sustained with the flaps down. While in general, while in general you don't actually want to do that. Your flaps will kill your sustained performance because you will lose more energy than you can use. Unless of course you are flying something like the k 84s But that's an exception, not the rule. If demand is there, if you guys want to see me explain flaps in like a 10 minute video with my blackboard stuff. The guide series that I do. Let me know in the comments. I'll be gladly to do it. If you think this is sufficient, then well, I might skip out on it. But expect I am expecting people to like it. So I'm already kind of preparing for it. Unless everyone says, nah, don't. This video is enough. Then I won't. But I'm honestly not really expecting it. Before we get into the gameplay, thank you to all the Patreons. And to everyone looking to buy anything from the Gaijin store. Discount link down below. No decal yet. I'm still waiting on it. I know it's getting kind of annoying to say this every video. But I have to. Otherwise I'm kind of ripping you guys off. So without further ado. Let's get right into it. First of all what is the 190A1 like? It's fast. It climbs decently well. Of course it rolls very well. The turn rate isn't amazing. But with the flaps you can get some nice turn rate out of it. And together with the fact that you have quite a bit of power. You can turn fight a lot of planes in this BR. And this also comes down to the fact that your enemies are most likely not exactly very bright. And the fact that your entry speed most of the time is a lot higher than your enemies. Which means that you can turn for a lot longer. So even though they might out turn you. At the end of the day you will probably stall them out. We crit the B18. We go up. We bait them into going for us. He does so. Then the P36 as well as the Heinck 100 decide that this guy is pretty sad. Because he's crit and lonely. So they decide to give him a hug. That comes assist number one. So we then fly towards the middle of the map. And we notice the P29 is a Russian one. Not sure if it's a K or an N. K, not really an issue. N, I have to be pretty careful with it. But they're already focused in a dogfight. And I can go for the key 27 The key 27 is definitely super annoying to kill. But we are much faster and the P29 is much more dangerous. So I'm going to shift my focus to him first. We kill him as he's completely occupied. And the key 27 is a vehicle that I can deal with. Even if he's good at the game. When I'm alone. P39, not so much. So I kill the P39. Key 27 is extremely slow right below us. And he's trying to dodge the Heinkel 100. But by doing so, he's so incredibly slow. That I just hold the trigger down. I'm not even going to waste my 20mm on him. Because well, the Key 27 is made out of paper mache. So then we dive in. We see Key 43, D520. As well as a lag 3. And they're all RTP. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother with them. They're gonna be within the AA bubble before I even get there. So I'm going to break off and go for this Yak one that's directly below us. And the here is going to be flap usage number one. Or at least the part that actually matters in this video. So we are diving on him. We are going a lot quicker here. So we can overuse them a little bit to be a little bit more aggressive. But we are on a six. I'm going to line up the shot and he's already going evasive. We shoot a little bit. We get a hit in. But that's all we do. So we break off. We go straight up. And we have enough energy here to just break off a little bit late. And if he tries to go for us, he won't get the shot. And then notice my team coming in. And I'm going to use my flaps to turn a little bit quicker. And this will kill my sustained. But I will get the shot right here. So I sacrifice some more speed to get the shot a little bit quicker. If you are fighting a plane that is much better than yours, that's a good idea. You want to be as aggressive as you can. If you are fighting someone that will outturn you even with your flaps down and you're not going to get the shots by using the flaps you are simply wasting energy you're better off waiting a little bit and seeing if you can get the shot a little bit later here we are right above two guys the d520 as well as the key 43 first thing we do we bait him into the head-on we go on sideways i'm going like 570 kilometers an hour so i go sideways this will bait him into climbing for me and then I can see if I can stall him out and get the shot. But the D520 isn't exactly that much of a threat. So I'm actually going to switch on over to the key 43. 
The D520 is still nowhere in range to get his nose on us. So I'm just going to switch on over. Wait till I drop behind the key 43 And then we are going to turn up and over. Or down and under. And we get the shot. He's too slow to do anything. We click on him. His plane falls apart. And then we shoot him again. Because well we are just kind of bad mannered like that. And we go straight back up. The D520 still doesn't have the energy to do anything. Because we had so much speed coming into this fight. Now I just want to be careful that the D520 doesn't get within like 900 meters. But we are going kind of sideways. He is cutting us off and he is still not really getting that close. So the second I notice that he's about to stall out. I'm going to pitch up over his nose. And then we use the flaps here to just turn inside of him real quick. We don't really need the flaps right there. But... In this kind of situation, it's always nice to get the shot a little bit quicker to not allow your enemy to recover as fast. And we're still going 500 kilometers an hour. Leg 3 comes in from the side, so we are going to pitch up over his nose. I don't want to use the flaps just yet. I'm going to wait for him to basically start stalling. Then I use the flaps. I'm going to turn down to pick up a little bit of speed. And with these flaps, I will very easily turn inside of him. And again, I am just sacrificing my airspeed. To get the shot a little bit quicker. Versus a lag 3. Not really that much of a threat. But hey. If you get the shot a little bit quicker. If you won't allow your enemy to dive out. It is mostly a good idea to do that. I then ask the bomber if he wants the bomb once more for free. I ask him again a little bit later. I even say it's just me and a bomber left. But he doesn't reply. The tickets are dropping pretty quick. And I'm sorry. But if you're not going to reply to me. I don't know what you are going to be doing. So... Instead, I'm just going to shoot you down. Next time, and I implore this for everyone basically that uses the chat. Turn it on that your enemy, that you can read your enemy chat messages. It's, it's all in the options. And this means you can communicate with your enemy. Which sometimes is pretty handy. When you get someone in the enemy team that says, yo, you can get a free bombing run. Yo, just shoot the tanks and you can RTB or whatever. Having a little bit of communication with an enemy when they are actually not being a dick to you. Is sometimes pretty helpful. So. Another game. Another 7 kills. Well actually 8. But you'll see that uh, in a little bit. So Yak1 here. Not really a threat. He is uh, engaging someone else. I have 3 teammates with me included. So 2 teammates around. And I'm just trying to come in from an angle. When he starts pitching up for the beer for the 9. That I can just catch him off guard. He does a flat turn. I barrel stuff him with my 20s. I just hold the trigger. And he gets crit relatively quickly. Everyone is on the deck here. But I don't want to be on the deck with a Yak 1B above me. That might actually know how to play. And I'm not really counting on my two teammates to kill them. Because sometimes you run into people at this BR that know what they are doing. And when they are fighting your two level 15 teammates. Very fat chance that they are going to be losing it. And then I have to deal with a Yak 1. That then comes out of orbit going Mac 26. And I'm not really looking forward to that. Especially if I'm already engaging people like the I-16s. The F-2As. They are pretty slow planes. But they turn exceptionally well. And if the Yak-1 then pushes me into them. I am boned. So I wanted to get him out of the match real quick. I-16. We go head on. We hit him a little bit. Don't really do significant damage. But then I noticed the F-2A here. Super slow. Just flying straight. And I'm going to spray my MGs at him. I'm not even going to use my cannons. Mainly because I would just want him gone. I don't want to deal with an F2A Buffalo. Extremely annoying vehicle to fight. Especially if you are already engaging someone else. It's a little bit like a biplane. It's not as obnoxious. But it's, it's up there. We go ahead on with an IL-2. I'm going to wait for him to get his guns on. Then I roll out of the way. The IL-2 will not have the energy here. He's already climbing up to us. We were diving on him. So all I have to make sure is that I don't fly into his guns. I'm going to use my flaps here to get the shot a little bit quicker. Because I will be stalling on top of him. And because he's so slow, again, I will just very easily shoot him out of the air. I'm going to aim at the cockpit because the IL-2 is just, it's fat, it's tanky, and I don't want to waste too many cannon rounds. So I'd rather just shoot near the engine area. If you either kill the pilot or the engine, that thing is completely boned. It's a heavy vehicle. If you turn that engine yellow, it's going to be orange very, very quickly. And when it's orange, that means that it's doomed. And yes, that is a pun. So here is the P-40. I think he got hit by AA. We are just going to be cutting him off. I just want to get there as quickly as I can. Before he slams it into the water. Because I'm kind of expecting him to do so. And then we just. He is completely oblivious. And then we set him on fire. We hit him some more with the MGs. And looking at his trajectory. I think I killed the steel control. Or he's trying to land on the water. 
And that 190 thinks... Yeah, you already know what's going to happen here. Very often I'll let it slide. But when it's that blatant... Get the fuck out of here. So I get behind him instantly. And... I'm not sorry. He already knew what was going to happen. He's already turning. I'm just going to use my MGs. I already crit his oil tank. And... Call me... And I kind of am. But when you are going to steal stuff as blatant as that... I will just reclaim my kill in terms of a friendly. Thank you for bailing out. And that is going to be kill number 4. And yes, a bit of a dick move. But you know, when you get treated like a dick, I will treat you like a dick. Then we chase on to the F4U1A. And the F4U1A is a plane that I will not be catching. Just taking a quick look. He is not a low level. He's level 50 at this BR. I was about to feel sorry because the guy might be like level 6. But luckily he isn't. And we can continue on, on our merry way. And Vladdy Daddy in front of us here. Nice name. He is going to be outrunning us pretty handily. And I'm not entirely sure why I'm trying to catch him. I'm just hoping for the fact that he's going to start turning. So I can catch him on the same speed. And he does exactly that. He's going to go to the right here. Absolute bot behavior. But I think he's flying towards his teammate. But then he goes and commits to the turn. And I can just sit on a 6. Hold the trigger down for a little bit. And eventually this guy will go down. We take a steal off at 7mm. You know. As those guns actually work in real life. Potes on the ground. He probably thinks we're playing arcade. Because he's trying to capture the airfield. All power to you. Thank you for trying to play the game. And it gave me another kill. IL-2 comes in. And he's going to full commit people. But it's the IL-2 with the M82 engine. Which means that he doesn't have 23mm. He only has the Shavax. Which is considerably less dangerous than the 23 version because the m82 is a little bit of a shit brick now i'm not gonna pretend that the other il2s aren't shit bricks either but the other il2s are at least very potent in what they are they can full commit quite well the shavex are still good but they're not the vya 23s and the engine just isn't that amazing so the IL-2 M82 is a shit brick compared to the other shit bricks of IL-2s. The other IL-2s can at least get that first turn in and just kind of hose you out of the air. The M82, I don't recommend it. So we dive on the A20 here. We don't have much ammo left and I'm just trying to get the shot as quickly as I can. So I'm going to overuse the flaps. I'm trying to get behind them. And this is an exact example of what I mean with sometimes you overuse your flaps a little bit. Because I'm using them so much, I'm just losing my speed. And I'm turning better, but I'm still not getting on this guy's 6. And then I make the fatal mistake of assuming that his turrets were down. Because he hadn't really been shooting. He is not having a good time with his damage. Luckily there's only like a 7mm on the bottom. So I'm just trying to get below him. And then shoot his wing off. And we are going to go straight into the next match. The thing is with flaps. Sure, they will make you turn better. But when you turn better... For a very small amount of time. If you're not going to get the shot in that time. You are just going to be throwing away your speed. And it doesn't matter how well you turn. When you're out of energy. You won't be able to turn very well anymore. You need to use energy to turn. Which makes sense. It's a little bit as using speed to climb. Every fight is an energy fight. Because without energy you won't be fighting. You will be on the ground with a turret. So be careful with overusing your flaps. Because at the end it doesn't really matter what plane you're in. If you're going 150 kilometers an hour. You are probably going to be stalled out. And you're probably not going to be turning particularly well. Nice assist there. No it's not a steal. I'm not going to pretend like it is. Just unfortunate timing on my end. But the flaps. If you don't out turn someone with the flaps. Unless you have a lot of energy in position. Don't use them. It is probably going to get you killed. So we go ahead on with the P-39. And you can tell I'm not using the flaps. Until at the end here. Because he is taking a horrible line. And I will be able to pull in. And I want you to rewatch it if you didn't really notice it. But I was just trying to play energy. I was trying to just go up. Stall him out. But then he started turning in very at the very last minute. Instead of early on like I predicted him to. And then I'm going to use the flaps to get the shot in. Before he gets a shot on us. And that's what in the end got us the kill. He was way too slow. And if we ended up not using the flaps. It probably would have resulted in a full commit head on at like 200 kilometers an hour. Which ends in both of you dying 9 out of 10 times. And then here it's the exact same scenario as with the Yak one in the previous game. I want to make sure that this D520 is out of the match. 
before I start engaging the full ball behind us. So I'm cutting him off. I'm trying to stay underneath him. I'm just trying to get within like one kilometer, 900 meters. And I'm just going to be spraying my MGs at him. I have way too many rounds. Luckily, he actually starts turning. So this is going to speed up the process a little bit. So I'm just going to cut my throttle. I'm going to use the flaps to lose even more speed and just turn inside of him. We hit him some more. And because he keeps turning into the wrong direction, I will stay on this guy's six pretty handily. He then rolls out and he's going to keep flying straight. I think he lost control or something. And then we click on him, we set him on fire. And just to be sure, we shoot him some more, but he burns up by the time we actually have to shoot him again. And here, look at my team. It's looking quite bad. There's a P400, a P40. And that's just, the entire enemy team is still alive. So I'm going to take a quick look here to see who I'm up against. Looks like the top two players are all lower levels. Gonna look at the lower guys because very... Well, not often, but sometimes at the bottom of the team with zero points. Or like 240 points. There is a level 100 that just doesn't engage anyone and plays it super, super passive. So I'm just gonna check throughout the entire lobby here. They're all pretty inexperienced. I'm not really too worried in this plane and this kind of position. But I need to get over there. And this BF110 is going in a little bit too hot. A little bit too quickly. And he might end up burning all his energy before we actually get there and i think he's gonna die without actually getting anything done then b 10 does the unthinkable and slams the p to the 9 n and the other beer for the nine kills the spitfire probably crit him before and now it's looking a lot more healthy at least for us p to the nine the other p to the nine also goes down to a bf 110 he finally burns up then i get hit by mid map aa fantastic no oil leak however and another F for you is just simply crashes. And the BF110 kills the third guy. And at this point I'm actually getting pretty pretty annoyed. Because I was looking forward to this fight. I was looking forward to like a 1v4, 1v5 maybe even. With some altitude in a good plane. Versus planes that I can actually deal with. Now it's only 1v3. And this is not why I play this BR. Or this, this game in general. I like carrying. And when my entire team, or when their entire team just combusts for no reason, I get a little bit annoyed because I was really looking forward to a very big fight. So the P40, we finally arrive at the location. I'm going to do the same thing. I go sideways, make him climb up to us a little bit further. We go up and over. I don't have to use my flaps just yet. I'm going to wait for him to stall out. And then once he's about to stall out, I'm going to use my flaps to get my guns on. Because if I use my flaps a little bit early, what ends up happening is I will... Again, trade some airspeed. And then I will be much more susceptible to getting shot at from longer ranges. Because I will be slower. I then switch on over to the Hurricane. Why I do this? Because I have a feeling this guy is going to camp the airfield. And the P-40 behind me is a fight I don't really mind taking. So I'd rather take out the Hurricane right ahead of us. Get rid of him. Don't have to worry about him camping the airfield. Don't have to worry... About him climbing to like 15 kilometers and then waiting out the tickets. Because I'm really not looking forward to that. But this guy is simply flying straight. He is going to be cancelled by Twitter. Just like everyone in the last video. With the P51 D10. And he's not even paying attention at all. He's probably tapped out. And why am I showing you this game? Because it's extremely disappointing. And extremely dissatisfactory if that's a word. Because we went from a 1v6, maybe maybe 1v4, to a 1v3. The first guy kills himself. The second guy flies straight away from us. And then this P40 is just ground pounding. So now I come in, I'm thinking to myself, well maybe I'll at least get a 1v1 in. Let's go. We go head on. I'm going to go horizontal for a little bit, bleed him on speed. And he also goes straight, but I'm going much, much quicker. So I will instantly turn inside of him. And then I will very easily dispose of him as well. And this is why it's so annoying in this game to get good footage. Because even when it's 1v3. Other than the first P40 that we killed. These other two guys have just not posed any kind of a threat. And it's super disheartening. Because I was looking forward to getting a good fight as I said before. But this is what makes it so extremely tedious to get good footage sometimes. And I get it. I'm flying at 3.0. I shouldn't expect my enemies to do well. But it's just... I wouldn't call it heartbreaking. It's really not that big of a deal. But, you know, that's, that's the first word that comes to mind. Thank you all for watching.
and I'll see you all in the next one.